city of Erie, Pennsylvania. With your host, Kaz Kwiatkowski and John Steiner. You are watching Taxpayers Hotline. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Taxpayers Hotline on the Government Channel. And Kaz just happens to be walking into my left as we speak. He's going to grab some paper in case if uh, anybody needs to uh, make some complaints or needs him to check on some things for him. And, you know, it's been a long week in Erie. Uh, Officer Putney walking by, waving hello. Um, actually, you know, we'll wait for Cass to get in here, but it's been kind of a sad week um, as far as, you know, tragedies go and, and losing a couple really good people. Hey, you moved me into that. Yeah, I didn't know what you were going to do, so that, I that figured. That terrible. And this is the unlucky seat. You got the lucky seat, I think. Ooh. But uh, before we get started, uh, you know, we lost a couple good people this week. Um, Paul Martin, former Mill Creek supervisor, passed away and... Of course, uh, you know, as probably everybody knows, Officer Mike Conway passed away right here at the police station. But so, before, you know, just like we did last week for Flo, let's, you know, just, can we just take a moment of silence for those guys? Okay. Okay, so Kaz, how are you today? Pretty good. We just had two meetings, so. Oh, uh, two meetings? Yeah. Meeting, meetings. Oh, there goes every. There goes the rest of the mines right yep. there. Got another meeting tomorrow. Same business. And yeah. Well, we got the controller over there, and who else is that rolling out of there? We have our advisors, our board members. Your uh, your attorney is he one of those guys? Our solicitor? No, we don't have. We don't need that. No, he no solicitor action today. Yeah, basically, we're we're having the pension meetings today. Yeah, how's that look? What's the pension looking like? They're doing well. Yeah. Absolutely, they're all doing well, aren't they? Well, it's over the years they've uh, they've done a lot better. Yeah, and we also reviewed our water reserve fund, which is uh, since council took it over a few years back, is now up to twelve million dollars, and, and that's used uh, strictly for uh, capital fund. Uh, we give so much to the city every year oh, as a return, uh -huh. and then the rest is monitored, and uh, it's there if we have a major catastrophe, you know. So look, that's kind of like our rainy day fund. You could say that in a way, cause, but it's limited. It can only be used for uh, yeah, a capital fund. It takes a super vote of council to take it out, too. Oh, right. well, not not a, a simple majority. Is that a five to two super majority? Or uh, is I believe it, a it is, one? yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's good. I mean, the city, I mean, at one point, we were, you know, got to give Joe Sinek credit in that area. We were on borderline bankruptcy. Well, council took it back uh, way back when Mario was around. In fact, they discovered that, you know, the, the fund was set up by him. So they have a board now. You know, there's a board that monitors it. Uh -huh. The funds are being invested uh, in a very good manner. Yeah. Uh, like I say, it's up to $12 million and growing, you know. Can you guys put that money into the general fund so you? Well, don't have to the administration that? will come to us every year. Uh, they'll be coming to us shortly, and they'll give us a wish list, mm -hmm. and we will give them uh, an agreed upon percentage of our assets, mm -hmm. and that will, and then they they come back and they tell us where they spent it, and it should match up with what they. Usually, it's things. Uh, if we have to buy something major, yeah. uh, major road repairs, you know, yeah. so it, it helps. It like, you know, eventually someday we hope to increase that, but that's, right. you know. Can you guys use that money to pay down the debt, debt service and stuff no, we, like that? No, it's not for that. So it's pretty, is it, is it, ear, what about the uh, revolving business loans that you guys no, have? No, that's. Something totally different. Yeah, this is, this is cap, this was set up way back, we were getting a little feedback. Yeah, we are. Uh, we, a little bit of, it's for capital and, and that's it, you know. Okay. Uh, but, and it, because in the past we, it was misused and uh, it was starting to drop in value. Yeah. Well, you got to figure with the pension fund, with the way, you know, the, the, everybody's 401ks are up. So our pension has to be up, the pension fund with all, you know, 
because everybody's investing in the market. Yeah, that right one's now. above. That's about two hundred and some million right now. The value of it. That's good. I mean, was that? Would you say that's above normal, or is that? Well, we were when when uh, when the pension boards were formed many years ago. Uh -huh. The funding level was roughly thirty-five percent, which meant uh, we only had thirty-five cents to cover every dollar of obligations. Right. Uh, since that time, it's up to almost 80 80 percent now. You just have to match the 80 percent. No, no. What that means is we have 80 cents on the dollar. Right. You know, covering our. Oh, really? Yeah. So. Wow, that's all. That's more than doubled. We're about 20 percent underfunded, with, but the ones that are in serious trouble around the, the nation and everybody, they're in their 50 and 60 percent range. Right. So we've, you know, we've been improving. Yeah. And you got to remember, we, we live by contractual obligations. Right. The, we have to deal with the market. We've been through a couple of downturns in the market. Yeah, right. But generally, it's it's been creeping up slowly. It'll take a while. I mean, we, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's. We, we're paying for the sins of the past. Whatever happened in the past was, you know. You know, with Trump in there right now and everything, you know, going on with, with him, you know, the markets are up. I mean, you got, I mean, everybody's 401ks are doing a lot better. Uh, biz, I mean, not around here. I think, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought I read that. We have you always got to be careful. The other shoe's going to hit your piece. Yeah, All-time unemployment in Erie. I mean, unemployment records. What, one thing about the market, it goes up and down, but generally, if you look at over the years, it's a pretty steady rise, you know, slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's until the bottom falls out. Like it just, It's just a roller coaster. It's a constant roller coaster. So what do, you, what do you see around the city, John? Anything? I was at the St. Paul's Fest over the weekend. That was a really good time. Um, Zimbabwe, I think, is coming up too. Isn't yeah. That? That's this week, or is that next? This weekend? You know, I. I think it's next weekend. Yeah. Why do I? Th I think that too. But. Twenty fourth, twenty fifth. And I saw you at uh, night out. Oh, the national. Yeah, Kaz yeah. and I went out for the national night out. I ran into Kaz at the Snoops. We were over on. Uh, 14th is that 14th or 15th they have a nice new park over there yeah we were we were there and then we we're at 4th street too. then we went down to uh best yeah bests yeah down at uh, wallace street park and you i know, didn't catch you up at 18th 19th street no i i you know you got a head start on me on that and you were all over town but yeah, I was with Wall i seen wally brown and the boys up there i like Wall. you know wally and the sisters do a really good job over in that and area. they're starting on the east side now you know i know i that's you know kind of by where i live and i i wish they would do a little bit more over there well i think they're just getting you know it was only about a year ago when they yeah they were they located the old jerry Lou fruit yeah that's and, where they're off at their office and you know it's been us it's going to take them a while because you know 18th street didn't happen overnight either no and you know they got to get a good group of you know they were lucky uh uh wally and his his uh, neighborhood watch and all that, right. and the organization there got. Well, they had Father Jerry and that. Father Jerry was doing that thing. So, I mean, it's going to take a while, but I think you know I'm seeing the seeds of it right now. Yeah, it's just going to take a while. Whoa. Yeah, I'm seeing a little bit on the east side. I was reading a couple of things that they're they're buying things and. Yeah, you they're, know, they're making a couple of minor improvements and empty lots. You know, Kaz and I were talking to um, Jeremy Bloser. Who I invited to come on today, but I don't know if he couldn't show well, keep, up. Or keep what. on him, you know. Yeah, you know he's the executive director of Best, and we were talking about Eastside development, and uh, you know the gentrification topic came up, and you know he brought up some really good points as to far as far as you know you know why people would think that and why that's kind of a misnomer, and you know he was pointing out different properties that were on sale right pretty much next to the park where we were yeah. talking to him at. He said, you know, that house, that house, that there was four houses in a block, in a block, one block area that have been for sale that nobody was bought. And he said the price, I mean, they're practically giving them away. And, you know, they've been wanting Best and Erie Insurance and these other places to come and purchase them. But nobody, they, you know, Best currently doesn't have the money to do that right now, or that's not part of their current mission. Well, it's well, going to take, like, you're, you know, it's going to take a partnership between public and private to pull this off. Yeah, I mean, and we're starting to see a little bit of it, you know. 
at this point, I think the the pub the downtown is getting a lot of the attention, and you know the neighborhoods need to start getting a little more love from everybody, which I think they are. Well, if you, if you read the Buki report, and everybody quotes it as uh, you know Messiah coming down from the mountain, yeah, or Moses, yeah, uh, he says the same thing. You know, you invest in the yellow zone first, right. but when opportunities arise, you don't turn them down. Which, see, he's right, but here we go. Oops, something's happening right. here. Quit, ha quit calling and hanging up. But uh, what, what happens is, is that, uh, you know, you're supposed to start in what would be the mid-level. Right. Like, okay. And then you build that up, you build that up, and, the, and then other properties. Go ahead. Something's going on. Yeah, I think. Are we know, on the right number? 870-1284, I think we are, yeah. Been the same that way for yeah. 20 years. <laughs> Somebody uh, must be screwing around. Yeah. One of our fans, right? Yeah, it's probably. Uh, but no, I mean, like you know, when he when he made that report, it's. Go ahead, Go ahead caller. Hello. How's it going there in the downtown Erie, with nothing blooming? Nothing is blooming. What do you mean? Oh, I don't know. It's I guess we got all kinds of blooming idiots downtown. <laughs> oh man, you're you're at the top of your game today. Oh yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing better, much better. The I, I, a little dizzy. I, I know I know the uh, it was only exhibition, but I'm sure the thrashing by the Browns didn't help you any. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, the Giants didn't even play. Oh, hey, I knew that would come up. Oh no. I you start. You, you're talking like a Pittsburgh fan now. It didn't count anyway. Right. I am a Pittsburgh fan. You're a Giant fan. Come on, John. A Giants fan. And years ago, I was a, a Yale Larry fan, too. You remember late Yale Larry? Yeah. He was a safety or cornerback for Detroit Lions. He was a punter, too. Yep, he was. And I remember a great guy up there in Cleveland. His name was Otto. Otto Graham. I spell Otto backwards. Do you remember Chet the Jet Handulac? I sure do. John saying, who in the hell is Chet the Jet Anulac? Chet the Jet? Yeah. He sounds fast. He, he was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember Rocky Colavito, too. Uh, that, that was some sad times. Yeah, and Jimmy Purcell. Uh, the, the man that used to, well, he did everything strange. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy, our boy Jimmy Purcell. Right? He ran a home run backwards once, I think. Yes, yeah, just like the Statler brothers when you come sliding home. From first, <laughs> you remember that song? Yeah. Hey, uh, <coughs> I see uh, they had Moss on TV the other day. Who, Moss? Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, it showed all his calls that he's been receiving and categorizing them. And he had a great big, uh, what do they call that, lawyer's tablet? Uh, 11 and a half by 8? Yeah, legal tablet? Or? Legal tablet. And he yeah. had everything marked down. And he could tell you how many calls he got, when he got them, what they occurred, how, how they were satisfied. Now, did you get the information from code enforcement, how many citations they've handed out? Nope. Uh, we're, we're still waiting for another report they promised us. Jeez, it sounds like... Uh, I have to go upstairs right after here and see what happened to it. You know, Jay not handing anything out to uh, the various committees. Yep, uh, but uh, I would say this about Moss, since he took over, it's uh, uh, it's crazy the amount of calls he's taken. Yes, and you know, I, I, I'm really impressed with him. Well, he's, a, he's a, he and I, I've talked to him and I told him, I said, I get a lot of compliments about him. He's taken the pressure off this show as far as like potholes and everything, because yeah, really. now, you know, he, he kind of speaks for the mayor directly, and... Uh, he has his problems, but I mean, he's uh, he's cleaning it up quick. They all have problems. Well, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a tough job he inherited. We used to have somebody that did that. Yeah, her name was Borgia. Right, and you know, you you need when you need that, you know. Well, sure, you need you need a a place to vent. Because the in the past, you know, even I would call up and they go, but. Uh, it, we, this department don't handle that. Well, since when? Well, the problem and then, then you're going back and forth, you know? The problem down in that city hall is voicemail. 
Because they screen every call that comes in. Yeah. Well, in my office, at when I was a controller, that didn't happen. Oh, Lucy uh, jumped right on it and forwarded it immediately. And if we did have voice messages, we got back to them that same day. That's true. But, you know, I have that problem at home. I get so many calls that... Well, yeah, you know, I... I I'm still trying to sort some of them out, and I got a new phone system that's not working well, so... We must have Spectrum. <laughs> no, no, actually, when I had... Sp uh, oh, you can't say when you had Spectrum, they were fantastic. Well, no, I had Spectrum, and it worked good. Uh, the problem was we our phone burned out, and I bought a new set. The thing went out that and, night. and the screeners on it are very sensitive... Yes, you can't have one of those pickup phones. You still, you still. No, I don't got a. I do have one dial phone in the kitchen. <laughs> do you really? Yeah, my kids want. Rotary uh, down in the basement yet? It still works. Yeah, somebody wanted to know what do you do with that. I said, yeah, what do you mean? What do you do with? He that? doesn't even have a cordless yet. He's still. Who? You? He still. Well, well, I got a cordless. I don't. Just joke. Yeah. <laughs> I even had a Marie Antoinette phone. Ooh. You know the ones with the the fancy handle and the square and all yeah. that. Oh yeah, yeah. And I, I, I even had a phone way back when a friend of mine worked for the phone company. Well, I had one of those. It was an Eagle phone, you know, and I, it, I have it in my kitchen. Mm -hmm. It's a combination rotary with the Marie Antoinette look. Yeah. Kaz, and, you know, uh, Kaz has one of those duck phones, that quack. You never see those? Like, no. Quack, when instead of ringing. <laughs> John, I was at his house one time. Yeah. That's my ringer for my phone. I have a quack. You have to call oh, really? Edna. <laughs> Edna over at, uh, what do you call John? Mayberry. Yeah, Edna Mayberry. Give me uh, 745. Yeah, right. Yeah, and what's her name is listening? What's that gal that used to be on uh, Laughing? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I can't think the of The one ringy it. dingy two, uh, Ruth Buzzy? Uh, oh, Ruth Buzzy. The one ringy dingy two ringy. You know what? I, some kid one time I was working in a, where I used, uh, where I used to work as an accountant, and they, they they had these numbers written on the wall. And he goes, what are those, gambling numbers? And there were five digits, John. Yeah. You'll know what they are, right? Yeah. One digit with a, with a slash and four digits behind it. Mm -hmm. I go, those are telephone numbers. He goes, what, you nuts? There's seven in there. I said, not when I was born. <laughs> they only remember? My phone number when I was living on Second Street. Yeah, five digit numbers. Number was really? 70173. Really? Yeah. yeah. I remember when I was in school, they came up with the uh, Union, the GL, Glenwood, you know, Glendale and all that, that. They started that, and, you know, we had to go home and tell our parents about it. You know, my sister Connie was an operator for Bell Telephone. Really? I guess what her number, her operator number was. What's that? 69. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm joking either. <laughs> So, so what, what's up, John? Unmercifully. So what's up, John? Not much. What about you guys? I you see things are moving and progressing, and we're getting ready to have all kinds of happenings down there. I, I think, you know, we have a strange alliance right now, a good alliance between... Well, EEDC is a profitable unit. It's non, it is not a non-profit. Is you that correct? I think so. Development Corporation. But, I, you know, I think you're going to, what's going to happen in the future could be very interesting for you know, let me the look, city. That's a good question. Let yeah. me, let John's going to look it up. But. Let me Google that, because actually I do think they are a nonprofit. Our profitable organization. I think John Persinger got a better salary being the CEO than if he would have been the mayor. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people that are better off losing elections. I remember, I remember, I beat a guy in the prim. I beat a guy one time in the primary. He's he's outproduced me income wise now for. A, I'll tell you his name off the air sometime. Okay. He, he come up to me. He said that was the greatest thing he ever did for me was beating me. I go, oh, you know, thanks. <laughs> yeah, he makes more money. Yeah. I well, mean, that's how things go. But you know, I've I've talked to him. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get him on the air here, and uh, we're gonna try to talk to him on here, but. You know, he's brought, it was brought to his attention when he ran against you, and then more job opportunities came because of that. Yeah. You want to hear what it says, John? Yeah. The newly founded Erie Downtown Development Corporation, a privately funded non-profit. Privately funded 
nonprofit led by a group of business and community leaders is working together in the name of transformational change. The, the EDC Growth's core mission is to fuel economic growth through real estate development in downtown Erie. That's right on their website. And I think the building they took over was tax exempt anyway. That's like an oxymoron. What's that? Funded nonprofit. Well, what that means is that uh, they're not taking any government money. Coming in. They're all their, you know, every, their whole budget is designed from. Well, they just got that. They just, yeah, who is a Plastec? Pla Plastec gave them a couple mil. Yeah. And you know darn well that's got to be some type of a tax write-off for them. But what it does is it gives them a, I mean, everything they've done, John, is not. Well, I understand. We, we, we have a. It's we, also putting their foot in the door like a lobbyist down in Washington. Well, think about that. What what they want to do is, I know what they're trying to do. Yeah, they're they're trying to take up the slack where infuse business downtown and, and get these buildings that aren't doing anything active. Yeah, see, they're no they're no different than uh, you take a private developer that's got the money. You know, they'll come into a town and like I just come back from Chicago and my God, there was the amount of building going on downtown with high rises and everything. What I mean, not like 100-story high-rises, but you know, sizable buildings, and it's just like unbelievable. Every time you see an empty lot, there was a, you know, there was construction going on, and so you know, these guys are saying, hey, look, the city's taking care of, you know, the bayfront, and the city's taking care of from the park up, but there was that gray area, third to sixth street, and you know, and so they're they're looking at that and they're saying. Second in German, all the way to sixth and parade. Yeah, you know, there's nothing wrong with that because if everybody takes care of, a, you know, you got the sisters, they're they're working on the east side now. It's going to be on the tax roll. And and the west side, you know, they've done some nice work, but even as much nice work as they've done, and you go down 18th Street, there's still more work to be done. Well, you know, I talked to a gentleman who is an, an owner. I'm not going to name his name. Um, he owns one of the buildings downtown, a, a major part of where they're at. And uh, re he's recently retired, and um, he still owns the building. And he, you know, I, I ran into him. I was out a couple of weeks ago, and I asked him, you know, is, are they has the EDDC approached you or talked to you and Erie Insurance and them? And he says yes. And he says, you know, I want pretty much three times of what the building is worth. So all these people that own these, and I think Modern Tool Square is now in the situ in the talks. I yeah. think that. Um, you know, the fifth in state, you know, I think, I mean, you know who owns that building, so that's who I talked to. And uh, there's another building right on uh, town, on, uh, on the square here that they're very interested. They have a couple buildings that they're targeting, and what they want to do is they, they want to reintroduce market rate housing downtown to downtown Erie. I don't think you'll get people coming downtown Erie and living. I will, I think, you, I think you're wrong, John, if, if we do one thing. Oh. We have to change the environment. Look what you got up on 12th and 12th to 13th Street. Yeah, on. but John, that was a huge mistake. Let me tell you something. That was a joke. Uh, I would, I would say, if you built down by the Bayfront, that'd be a no-brainer. Uh, if you built around the park, but you cleaned it up. In other words, what I mean by cleaning it up is, you you beautify it, you uh, you change the atmosphere there so that. Like when you and I were kids, you could go down that park, remember? And the water shot up in the air and you had a decent fountain. Yeah, well, I mean, they can change that. You know, they have it all automated. Now. I think that, you know, if those developments that they put up by Arby's were down here on Perry Square, they'd have been sold. I think if they were down on the Bayfront, they would have been sold. But we need to start, you know, introducing different things like rooftop restaurants. Yeah, we, and, we're the only city that has the monkey cage down there. You know, Baltimore had a monkey cage years ago out there on their yeah, but, island. Yeah, but, but you, you know, can take the monkey cage off, or you can slide it open, can't yeah, you? The, I the, mean, there's a purpose for the that. The reason why they did it, John, the old gazebo, which was open, yeah. you don't even want to know what was left there every night. Uh, it was... It was they had yeah. the, the restrooms on the east and west side down, down in the, the dungeon down there on North Park Road. But you know what? If they, if they didn't do that, people would be, you know... I mean, they, they got equi they I, I don't know if they got equipment stored in there, but, you know, at different times, 
they, you know, they, they just, they, they don't need it, uh, you know, broken into. And, they could have just had a, they could have had a shell deal with a, a sliding door out front. John, the thing is, is that right now, throughout Erie's history, we have one opportunity where we have the business community, the governments working together, um, the universities, we're all working together on the same page. Now, what we have to do is we have to develop the downtown core, but we have to remember that there's people living there. What do we, if you just can't come in and do this and then kick everybody out and say, beat it. Old, you old know? timer houses. I mean, there has to be some type. If they purchase something, there needs to be a place for these people to go better than what they have now. That's true. Two quick more things, then I'll get off of here. Go ahead. Vic Scott is building that development down on the waterfront. Yeah, the hotel. Uh, the, the, is he going to control that road, road, or is that going to be the city's road? Uh, Got it all blocked off down there now. Well, I believe, I believe it's going to be, you know, I have to check, John. He's going to make changes to it, okay? And they, they'll, they'll be approved by council because he's already given us a preliminary plan. He wants to have like a... He wants to over, uh, overpass. Well, he wants a fountain. Uh, if you look at his whole plan, and I, got, I told you, you're free to look at I got a copy of it. It's very interesting. It shows, yeah, it shows a, a bridge from the parking ramps... To Hammett, right? To Hammett, you know, if he can pull it off it. It's going to be probably a joint venture between the two of them because his plans for the second hotel would be, if he ever did build it, would be probably some of it would be used for overnight stays at Hammett like they have at other towns, John. Yeah, they do that in Pittsburgh. And yeah, probably, and I'm sure he'd have a special rate. But uh, he plans on building two parking ramps, uh, some residential, commercial. And, uh, you know, a lot of it's going to depend on future funding, uh, his finances, uh, he, uh, but in the end, uh, yeah, that road, he planned, uh, if I remember how I saw it, it was gonna be changed a little bit where you got like a, a fountain in the middle and all that, but I think the city will still own that road. Oh, that's to be seen. But one other well, thing. But you Jason know what, whatever. The various festivals we're having downtown is driving businesses out of the city. Well, I, I think it the is. what festivals? The, all different festivals. You have your motorcycles, you have these. It's hurting some businesses. Is it? the, the, oh, yeah. The food trailers coming that, in. That's what's hurting. We'll talk about when we hangs up. Remind well, me. it's a combination. Like, if you talk to. Uh, I'll get off and you guys could chat that. But yeah, I see pepper, pepperoni pal or whatever. They're, they're done now. They mo they're moving up. Yeah, he was up the road, though. You know, that was kind of amazing because he's in what I used to call the. Uh, uh, those clubs up there were geared at a certain age level. So I'll get off and listen. Okay. But what he's getting at was uh, I knew a prominent businessman, and he moved out. He moved to a different location. And We'll talk about it in a minute. Go ahead, caller. Hi, Cass. Uh, were you up in what, Minnesota to visit your family? or? No, uh, I was in Mississippi and then Chicago. Uh, my daughter moved to Chicago now. So you drove from Mississippi? Oh, no, no. I, I took the airplane to Mississippi. That's It takes too long to get there, and then I, I drove to Chicago. Okay, I see. Because that, I've been on that, I think it's Interstate 55. That is a very interesting ride. Where's that, to Chicago? Well, yeah, it goes from Chicago all the way down south. Oh, I've never, yeah, I've never driven down south much past uh, Nashville yet. Yeah. I mean, I've, well, I've gone to Florida, but... Uh, I've never taken the Mississippi trip. Why, is it an interesting road? Oh, yeah, just, I mean, it kind of uh, follows like the Mississippi River, so you see all the cities and just everything that's, that's carved out by that river is just very interesting. You know, if you ever get a chance, go to Minneapolis-St. Paul. You see the, like, uh, the, the upper Mississippi, and you can actually see what, you know, it's a nice-looking city up there. I drove, drove through there, and I didn't spend any time, but, yeah, from what I've seen, it just... Just looks like, a, I mean, you imagine back in the day, just a very powerful city, just with all the mills and yeah, um, it was and industry, and you know, I mean, just a great, great city. And they repurposed a lot of those mills and breweries into uh, condos now. Yeah. 
but they're all along the riverfront. And they look, you know, they're really nice, but... Yeah. Yeah, she moved out of there. She wanted to be closer to home, her and her husband, so... Yeah, uh, hey, hey, nice too. Yeah, it is. It, uh, we, we were up there, and uh, we had the grand... Uh, my other son came up. So I kind of saw my whole, all my kids, not at one time, but it, it's, it's what's bad about when, you know, the new world, everybody lives out of town now. Yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, did you ever, I, I called several weeks ago about the, uh, you know, the gasoline tax went up, and did we ever get any liquid fuels money? We do. Uh, I don't have, you know what, uh, I should bring the... Yeah, you got you got let us know about how much increase that we got. Well, I can tell you, uh, well, I have to ask the guy about the increase, because all, all council sees is we see what they collected for the year. The state? Well, we get a report, whatever they get upstairs. Uh, every every month we, we meet with the finance department, and we look at all of our various you know line items. So liquid fuel would be on there. But I'll, I'll make it a point to ask him if he got any more uh, money, okay? Yeah, that'd be interesting. See, hey, if, if we got an extra, you know, fifty, hundred thousand dollars, that would help. But I can tell you that uh, I could give you the figure of what we've collected to date. I, I don't have it here. I got, I get the budget report. You know, I'm pretty sure that every month they've added roads to be, you know, because I was talking to some of the streets guy. Matter of fact, yesterday I was talking. I mean, what you can use the money for? No, they're they've paved more streets and they're, you know, they're they've added well, more. Well, things. liquid fuels is interesting. You can use it to pay lights, like and and streets. Yeah, whatever you use it for. I think that's it, though, isn't it? We pretty much use it for that. Yeah. I'll, I'll check about, you know, liquid fuel, whether it increased. Yeah. Well, I, I have seen some improvement on the uh, city streets. Um, yeah. I, I know they, they did that, uh, that area of Broad Street by your County Farms and the Save Lot. That street there was neglected for years and years. They finally paved that. You know, that's a very good observation because I agree with you. I was, you know, uh, especially after the long winter and tough winter we had, mm -hmm. they have done a really good job. You know, we haven't had gotten any complaints on this show. And when I drive around, I mean, I, I don't pay attention all the time, but it's kind of like, wow, this road is pretty, you know, I can tell that it's been worked on. And and somebody asked me, they said, you know, who, who controls Grandview? Remember that question came up? Yeah. And I did find out. Uh, it's a weird cacophony. So what else is new? Well, it <laughs> from from uh, Pine Avenue heading east. Yeah. Uh, Mill Creek does that. Oh, really? In fact, they, you just saw they they paved Grandview from Pine yeah. Avenue west to uh, probably be a uh, old French. Uh, I'm trying to think how Mercy far it goes. Hurst. That's well, a city. That would be Parade Boulevard. That's a city, and then the city has another stretch. The state takes it on the far west side. Wow. So it's it's a it's a weird mixture of uh, how we decided that, but. Yeah. Well, hey. Are you still there, caller? Yeah. Uh, the only thing I would say, PennDOT is why I know this is PennDOT, because it's the area of 12th and Peninsula and 12th and Pittsburgh. Those yeah. roads are so beat up there. I don't even, they're like long potholes. I don't even know if it's called yeah. ruts, but they're so deep and jagged. And I was surprised, like, Turn around on the shore, a motorcycle didn't wipe out on them. Was, and that's PennDOT. That's, that's not the city. That's not Mill Creek. No, that's PennDOT. And yeah. That's PennDOT. That 12th Street is PennDOT. If I remember, that's Route 20, isn't it? Between, uh, 12, uh, yeah, I would say. 12th Street is Route 5. Probably in Green Garden and uh, Peninsula. It's just deep to crap. Yeah, you know, they. it's like Pine Avenue. They get to it every so many years. I, I would have to ask, like, uh, Representative Harkins, if he knows that when, when that street, you know, if they get, like, advance notice, when they're going to repave those things. Well, hey, you know, Mill Creek knows about it, and I'm sure Mill Creek probably reminded them, hey, you know, we got businesses here. They need to take them care of. Well, you know, you've got to figure, I think the Peninsula Drive is Route 832, if I'm not mistaken. So, you, really? yeah, I think it is. So, you'd have to. That would definitely be one of the for sure things to do roads that need to be addressed. I mean, that's pretty much, I mean, actually, that probably is the most traveled road in Erie County. I mean, as far as routes go. So, I don't I'll tell you what, even between uh, on Peninsula, uh, between 12th and uh, probably, well, it'd be 6th Street, 8th Street, um, they got a, there is, the traffic there is horrendous. 
I've seen several accidents there because there's no turning lane for people trying to get into Mason Farms or McDonald's when they're heading south. Yeah. yeah. Traffic stacks up, and it, it, it's just a nightmare. And people don't know that, hey, you, in this town, when the traffic's bad, you got you to make right-hand turns. You can't make left-hand turns off the peninsula when it's that bad. No, you're absolutely People don't realize right. that. And there, a lot of them are old, and a lot of them are stupid. He's saying they should only have right-hand turns, right? There. Well, you can't take left-hand turn. I mean, he's right. I mean, they're, especially when you're going south and you try yeah. to turn into one of those businesses. That's not what I'm talking about on Peninsula. All yeah. that Peninsula traffic is going down. These people are trying to get into Mason Farms, trying yeah. to get into McDonald's. They can't do it. It's, right. it's just ridiculous. Yeah, you're right. It's ridiculous. Even that country fair on the corner gets crazy, too. Yeah, you got to see what they do. Like in some of these towns, they, they tell you you can't, you can't turn. Yep. You have to go to a, uh, we haven't got there yet, but like when you go to Allentown, you'll travel there, Peach Street. Well, they'd have like a boulevard in the middle, wouldn't they? Or is that uh, well, thing? McKnight Road in Pittsburgh did that. They put barricades down there yeah. to prevent people, because they had too many accidents. Yeah. But what they do now is the same thing they do in Allentown. you you got to travel a mile down the road, yeah. and then you got a road that said all turns here. Yeah. And you go around a loop, right. and then you, you come out to a light. Well, they do that up on Upper Peach too, where you. Not, I mean, when you go past 90, there you have Bob Evans, and um, there's some other or the restaurants. You can't. You have to go around there too in some places. So. But I mean, like in Elton, you actually come up like this, see, mm -hmm. and you, you got to go like this, and you know. That's some good artwork right there. Yeah, but that's a, you, know, <laughs> you do a loop like. Yeah, right. And and I've been noticing, you know, that might come to Peach Street someday. Yeah, I agree. Anything else, caller? Yeah, one more thing before I go. You guys were talking about the casino uh, last week. Yeah. Now, uh, if I would have went to the Hammer Mill, but Bayfront Highway was still there when, that, when they were talking about it, right? That was the Bayfront Highway is already built. They would have made an access road from that Bayfront Highway, probably blew out all those, uh, it would be like probably around Queen Street. You guys know where Queen is? Mm, not familiar. I, I've heard it, but... They know where the uh, old Kingtown uh, baseball field is. Ah, yeah. yeah. The, way, the way the rumor was back then, they were going to bring the heavy traffic on 12th Street, and they were going to build an access road uh, north to south, cutting down the East Lake Road and into the property. That was one plan they had. I truly believe that we would also would be talking about a bridge to Prescott Isle from the east side if that casino was there. Well, you know, when they talked about it, they had they even had a monorail plan. I remember that right along, right along the bluffs. You're yeah, they were going to take the right. monorail to the GF property. Yeah, and they hoped to link it to the peninsula. Right, but that would be the that would be a good idea. They had a 3D theater planned, uh, an arena. I mean, forget the bridge; just do a monorail thing. You just go right over the top. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, we 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 uh, we screwed up on that, sir. Yeah, we dropped the ball. Well, see, see the thing is, you could have took that that Bayfront Highway because there's still that access road to East Avenue from the Bayfront Highway. Right. So there's a road that's already built. Correct. So you just go from East Avenue. You might have to buy maybe six, ten houses, and you would go right in front of that lighthouse and into the Hammer Mill property. You would have been there. There would have been a road. Yep. You know, it's bad. Front and, and a road, and now you're at the casino. No problems. The bad part is we'll never know what they could have done. We would have $18 million more a year for our bu and budget. You know what we could have did with $18 million more every year? And by now, all the money we would have paid them. Yep. It would have been, oh, we'd have been, it, done. it would have been all profit at this point. Yep. And we could have been developing and, you know, economic development stuff. And well, we still were going to make money. It was just a little bit less for a few years. Yeah. I mean, you, nobody <coughs> back then would spend a little to make a lot. And it made me sick to my stuff. I used to call this show. I remember when Jimmy and Ian were talking about it. I'm like, please, spend a little to make a lot. Please. Yeah, it, it might have been our last big opportunity. Yeah, that and was it. Hey, that was it. I mean, that would have, that would have changed the city. That would have changed the east side. And hey, the city blew it. Yeah, you know, if if we were smart with the money, and it would have, you know, not that I was the mayor or anything at the time, but as controller, I would have 
try to convince them to, you know, put the money aside in little pockets. Well, we had people. You know, we had people. Little funds that we could have used for different different things. We had people in power positions trying to purchase property. We had the Erie Times News didn't want it there, and we had an important mayoral race all going on at the same time. And it was just a perfect storm. It was a perfect storm of stupidity, in my opinion. But oh well, what are you going to do? We just think, think if we could have put a million or two aside for streets, yeah. million or two aside for public safety, yeah. million or two aside for. Uh, different, different. Like you talk about a loan project, right? We could have. You still there, sir? Yeah. Yeah, we could have done a maybe put a main into a loan fund or something. Absolutely. You could have put a. You could have developed a whole industrial type of uh, revolving loan fund to where we built on our industrial. You know, the tourism and all. That's great. You know, good jobs. I mean, down here, that's what you want on the bayfront. You know, we're working on, you know, we have the uh, in, in innovative district where you have the uh, high tech, but we have to have people focusing in on an industrial aspect uh, but of even economic, because th that's where the family sustained John, jobs even, are. But John, even little restaurants downtown, they could have got part of that loan to, yeah. you know, beautify their... You, and then you add, then you take that, like we talked about, you take that 5,000 revolving loan, and then you go to this and say, look, I have, I need it to match. So you take that money, yeah. and then you would get a matching grant or matching thing, and then you have 10000 where you expand your business, and then you bring more employees, and that's how it grows. And then when, when the downtown starts to change, or wherever we do this, like on the east side, the west side, mm -hmm. everybody likes to be part of something that's, that's good. Yeah. Anything else, caller? Yeah, and if you could imagine, if they had cleared all those houses probably from the west side of the hammer mill below 2nd Street, you would have a lighthouse there. You would have a, you know, a four-lane highway traveling right into the casino at the hammer mill site. It can clear all that brush and all those trees. You could see the lake. The lighthouse would be there. It's going to move that lighthouse. But all those other houses, they're low income down there. But they could have been easily bought out. Yeah, I think they were part of it, too, the plan. I mean, all those houses down, they're older. You know, that's the old housing stock. A lot of like we were talking about a little bit. A lot of houses for sale, but nobody wants to purchase them. So you're right. Those houses down there, they're a dime a dozen. They're they're not very they're not in the high demand. That's for sure. So hey, I'll let you guys go. Hey, thanks for calling. Yep. Okay, Castle. You know, I want to talk about something. Yeah, go ahead. Mixed use. You know, we've been talking about that a lot, and that's you know that's the key term for any type of new development. And honestly. In the future, I'm not convinced that that's the way to go. We'll pick it up in a second. Yeah, I, I'll hold that thought. Go ahead, sure. caller. Do you, uh, you or John, and maybe John would be better when I give me the answer on this, do you stay in touch with DJ? Yes. Okay. Can you do, a fa do me a favor? Cash has my phone number. Give me a call. I got some photos I need to send to DJ, but I don't have his email address or his phone number anymore. I kind of lost it with the uh, change what I'll do is I will, um, I'll give Kaz his phone. I have a cell, I'll, I'll give it to Kaz, and then Kaz can forward it to you. Oh, okay. Okay, Doc. Uh, all right. Just so I can get it to him, because I think you appreciate these photos. All right. Hey, you guys have a good discussion going okay. on. I you won't too. interrupt this any more than what you already got. Thank you. No problem. Hey. Kaz, I'm very... Where are you talking about mixed use? You the mixed use. I, you know, you, the GF site? Any site. You know the the, the office the uh, yeah. or the the, re, the um, business commercial right. office retail re, and then you have the residential on top. Yeah. The wave of the future, and we've seen it here in downtown. We started to talk about it. Restaurants downtown. These everything is mobile now. Everything. Uh, the food trucks. The food trucks are hurting these businesses down here because we let them. Yeah, because I mean they're paying thousands of dollars to to. For rent yeah. a food truck pays i don't know how much to, to sell food but they, they pay a it's not much it's a hundred dollars i think a couple hundred maybe okay a couple but hundred. then they got to get their health license that that's that's not okay. us so that right there it, luckily for the businesses downtown there's a thing called winter time you can't sell food and sit in the park in the winter time well you can but Who's gonna nobody chooses not to though the wave of the future is not brick and mortar you know, the wave of the future is mobile, food trucks, this, that. And another thing is office space. A lot of people, due to technology, yeah. are more and more people are now working out of their homes. 
in order to save money on office space. A lot of people I know are working out of their homes So what would now. be your solution, John? I, you know, that I, I'm just, you know, the solution, this mixed-use solution, well, here, no, what, is starting to really scare me. Well, what they brought up was when... I, I know what the genesis of this argument was. And I was a mixed-use advocate, and I still am to some degree. Well, I am too, but mixed I'm use scared about mean, it. Mixed-use does not mean that you're going to have all three present. Right. Okay? What, what I know some councilmen were afraid of, and even when I wasn't a councilman, I was afraid of this. Okay, you take the GF site. Yeah. And you make it all residential. Yeah. And then you shut it down. Okay? Yeah. Eddie Kissel will tell you that's not a good barometer. No. Okay? If you remember, there was a plan for the east waterfront, uh, roughly where Rum Runners is. Mm -hmm. Okay. McAllister's was going to be a three- to four-story project. Right. That fell through. It's going to be a parking ramp disguised with offices and everything around it. Going further east was going to be a gated residential area with a high rise that varied from time to time up to 14 stories. Okay? Yeah. And it probably would have made money. Okay? Yeah. The problem was they wanted to shut it off. Now, the Kissels of the world, and I, I like Eddie Kissel, and he's right. That was the fear we all had that, you know. The access would be shut off. Right. Well, even with the convention center, they shut it off at yeah, night. Yeah, and then they got, then they, yeah. Okay. Right along the walkway, they right. did something. Other you know? towns don't shut it. Okay. No, you can't. You shouldn't. But they do. And so I think the fear was if you take the GF site and you, like, I'll give you an example. I just came back from Navy Pier. Mm -hmm. I'm going to check because I'm not sure what they're doing. Yeah. But Navy Pier used to be pretty much retail. Correct. Okay. Yeah. But now they're building a section onto it. Uh, they're going to rent it out for uh, parties and for weddings. Yeah. And there's another section. Looks like it's either going to be a hotel or residential. Actually, residential along the waterfront. Well, incorporate not, into Navy Pier. And that would be a good place to do that. And and I think what what they did don't didn't do there is and they didn't do this in San Diego was lock off the waterfront. I think if they do that, if they lock off the waterfront, which is a fear every lot of people had, okay, yeah. that if you make it one way and then all of a sudden, you know, if you spend that kind of money on a house, mm -hmm. you can't go down Niagara Pier, right? No. Okay? That's what I think they're afraid of. So mixed use came up, and we said, hey, look, keep it open to the idea that you can have some things that people, the public, like to do. In other words, and retail came up, offices, because maybe, like there, we got medical offices down there where people can, you know, you get nice views from some of those medical facilities of the waterfront, right? right. Well, that, that would be a good, that, the GIF That's what they site. meant by mixed use. Don't, in other words, if you go out there and you say it's going to be, you know, residential only, people would get, okay. No, you can't do that. They but would, I think, would be crazy. so mixed use is a wild term. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's going to happen a three-way mix. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure business will determine, like, if they think they can put some housing in there, I'm not against it. If you've got a retail component, like what they're doing now with the, the oyster have bar you, that's going in there. Have you ever been to the, um, the gate, you know, the Inner Harbor in Washington, D.C., where the Gaylord International Hotel is? Not Baltimore. You mean Washington? Washington. Yeah. No, I've never been to that one. It's, it, it, that's the, I mean, it's kind of like what I've we I've been have. to Baltimore one, but. I don't, I don't think I've ever been to that one. I've driven by it, but I've never studied or looked out. Yeah. But, you know, they have the hotel, and then they have the, you know, the business residential. Now, that would work at our GAF site. Well, I think that's what they mean by mixed use. Mixed use is a, it's scary. It's, it's one of those terms that it could be misunderstood. Mixed use means that you're open to anything, okay? You don't want to make it one way. If you make it one way, uh, you're always going to, you know, if you made it all retail, and this was, a bigger city, that wouldn't hurt, okay? Yeah. But to be realistic, you probably got to put some residential and, you know, other stuff like that in there, okay? So, I mean, that's what their thought process is, that they need some revenue, you know, from other sources. So mixed use, I wouldn't get scared about it, John, or frightened. It, it, just, it's, it's, it just seems that... What we didn't want is a lot of... Trends. Yeah. The trends are 
Well, the, I, trucks. And you know what? Travel. Bi no brick and no um, businessmen brick know and that. Mortar. But I can tell you this: when I was in Chicago, and it's the same thing ever was. They're worried about AirNab. They're worried about uh, Uber. I mean, you got cab drivers that got to buy licenses that cost a lot of money. Go to classes in Chicago. You know, I can only to lose. You know, and these guys get the same rights in the food trucks. I think what we got to do, and Lou Tuio found this out. He started the food truck trend many years ago, and they put them everywhere. And then, like Kresge's and Grants would say, hey, wait a minute, you're right in front of our restaurant. Yeah. Okay? So they lightened up on it. What we should do is what they do in other towns. You put them in areas where there's no restaurants competing. Well, see, that's where the problem. I mean, we have Dave's Diner right there, beautiful place. Yeah. And then right there, we have food trucks. Well, the one guy that I was going to tell you about, Dave. I won't tell you his name, but I'll tell you off the air. Okay. Okay. He looked at it like every time it was a combination with him. Yeah. And, and I've talked to the, the one lady that owns another restaurant over there. Yeah. And it's the same thing. It's the food trucks are getting worse now. But one of the big killers was we closed down that street for a month, yeah. almost a month. Right now we're going to close it up another another yeah. week. Right. Now you don't think that's a problem. Everybody goes, "Well, wow, what kind of problem can it be? All the people will come down. The people that come down are not going to eat at this one restaurant I knew because it was a little high end restaurant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So he can't all of a sudden sell tuna fish sandwiches and submarine sandwiches. Yeah. And then where he's got uh, adult beverages that are geared for a different crowd, he can't now sell beer at a buck and a half. You know, it just... It, you know you know what I'm getting at? Yeah. So, I mean, what we have to look at is, and this is what I want to tell, you know, Mr. Persinger and others, we have to decide what do we want out of downtown, you know, and how do we protect those that make an investment? Like, you know, one guy told me, he says, I pay 1900 dollars a year in, in taxes to the city alone. Yeah. He says, and only to, he says, I can build a food truck. Is there, let me ask you a question. Is there a law stating how close uh, an ex a food truck can actually park to a restaurant? Uh, no, I don't think there is. I mean, not. there should be. Well, they, we could make a city ordinance. That's what we need. Basically, right now, and, and I, uh, you know, the, the man that controls that right now does the best he can. Dave? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Dave's great. And he tries to keep them, you know, off yes, each other's back. he does. But he, Dave is, you got to remember, he takes, really, he takes his orders from. I know he takes his orders. He, I, you know it's Cass. But, but I think he would. free enterprise, I get it. But he would agree with you that, you know, usually in bigger cities, the food trucks end up at industrial sites. Uh, and that's fine. Industrial sites. Hospital uh, sites. Yeah. Not. You know that that's what I you know when I lived in Florida that's where they were camped out yeah. at well, not in, in front of downtown restaurants. Well, even in Washington D.C., you, you know how tough it is to find. You cannot see anything above ground. There's no McDonald's. You, know, it, it you have to go into a like a, a These, train station to find it, right? Yeah. So the food trucks are like in areas where you it's know, sparse. I, and I'm not trying to, to down. You know, I, no, I'm not either. I get free enterprise, but. If you're down there posting up in front and they're losing money, eventually they're they're not going to survive. Then they got to move. Then you've got empty shops downtown. Then you've got people that come in. Yeah. They're trying to this EDDC's trying to come in to bring business people, vibrance, yeah. new life. And we have empty storefronts because we have food trucks sitting out front of them stealing all the money. You saw the it was an article in the paper. Yeah. Yes, we noticed. Our staff suffers. Our total numbers suffer. They're the ones paying the rent. They're the ones that are paying the taxes. To make this city work. You know, and I think going forward, that's, you know, first of all, they probably never thought of that, John, because it wasn't a big issue. When I was a kid, you had the peanut man. Remember him? Uh, not really. The peanut and popcorn man. Oh, okay, yeah. He had a little stand in the park. And that's okay. And that was peanuts him. Peanuts and popcorn is different than any, you know, but he didn't. But he didn't bother. Cheese sandwiches. He didn't bother all the restaurants around North Park no, Road. No, no, no you, nobody wants peanuts for lunch. And that's okay. But you know, in Erie, you want quick You want quick food. You go sit and eat well, in the park. No Thank God it. for wintertime. I mean, they're getting good at it because these trucks now are like, you know. Yeah, they're like little mini restaurants. I, I do remember, and this, this came up once, and I remember, I don't know how. Must have been in the. It wasn't an ordinance, and it wasn't something. But you remember when we used to play baseball at Ainsworth? Yeah. 
Okay, do you remember the right field line? Yeah. The street? Yeah. Well, there was a guy named Mr. Servidio. And he, he pulled up there. Yeah. He, yeah, and that's good. It, but, but you'll love what they did to him. It wasn't the city, okay? City said, yeah, you, you know, you have a license anywhere you want in the city. I bet you I know where this is going. Where? The team, right? Well, what the team did was they made <laughs> right. That's where the rule came in, why you can't leave the... Can't leave the arena. No, that's like send, that's like. And you can't bring food in. That's like posting up in front of uh, Jerry Ut and uh, selling hot dogs outside right before you go into the game. You can't do that. Now, now you see that in Cleveland. Oh yeah, you do. And yeah. you see it in Pittsburgh. Yeah, but not right directly next door to the. Yeah, I think you got to be down what, the ways. What the, what the people do is they. Well, it used to be the peanut guys. They were selling cheap peanuts. I don't think you can bring they, they were hot dogs in, though. Peanuts you can. Well, they used to, they were starting to, they crack down that stuff now because they check you. But in the old days, you could buy a big yeah. bag. If you knew the game, you know, yeah. you, you just waited them out. Yeah. And, you know, closer this, to game time, you get a nice bag of peanuts. This, this whole, I, I'm very concerned of, of the wave and the history of the whole mixed use. Well, idea. you know, we're in a different world, John. We got... We got apartments, air nab, that we're not sure they get inspected. Yeah, you know. Another thing we talked about this before: these older buildings. What's the one thing you have to have to have to have uh, you have to in order to uh, reinvest and to bring them up? Elevators. Code? Elevators. Yeah. Now, honestly, elevators need to be one of the number one priorities economic I, development. What I think. What I think they should do. Because you've got to have them. What? Elevators. Yeah, but I'm not being cruel. Okay. In some cases, it just doesn't pay. I get it, but I you mean, gotta have them, or else you can't. I mean, you, you can't yeah, invest. Yeah, but you can't take. Here's the. We gotta get around that, okay? When we were in Poland, they didn't have this, okay? In yeah, but Europe, you gotta have them here, though. Huh? Well, I, I think we have to sit down with the people that come up with this idea, and I think we have to be realistic. If you look at the size of some of these buildings, okay? Yeah. I mean, realistically, yeah. they're not huge buildings. No. And you take Three, some four floors, maybe take some ones on North Park Row. Perfect. Not, I'm not talking about the corner one. I'm talking about like uh, let's talk about Tippies or El Lucas. Yeah. Perfect example. Well, El Deluca is a little bit bigger. Okay. He's got a little more space. Tippies is a fair assumption. Okay. Kind of a short building. There's what two floors? Or, or where Bertrand used to be? Is that three floors? Tippies? Yeah, but I mean the, the size is very. Oh, okay, right. Okay, where the Lucas is out a little bit. Yeah. And the one on the corner of the cart, the old Carter building. Yeah. That's out a little bit, so. Yeah. You're doing a little bit more area floor space. You take a building like where Bertrand was or Tippies. You know how much you got to charge them to make up for the elevator. Oh, you know what? Honestly, and that's what they did. We talked about it last week they you know um Filippi and now, those guys did it up on by the at the um police or the fire they got station a grant for that. and they got a grant for that but i'm going to talk to the city of chicago i'm going to ask them about we were in a restaurant and it was at least two stories high for the public the second floor had a stairwell no public elevator now the guy saw my wife and heard her say something, so he said she could use the, the elevator in the kitchen. I don't know how that works out. It, but you got to remember, that's not for the general public. Yeah. They had to adapt, you know, use it. So I want to know how they do in Chicago. And I know it's not the same state, but that's what we got to do is say, in some cases, as much as we want to make it ADA accessible, mm -hmm. what if we compromise by, you know, making a bottom floor accessible? In some cases, you just, you know. But correct me if I'm wrong, but ADA is a national, federal. But I think, I think if. How do we circumvent it is the I question. Think, I think if you can get your local group to sit back and not complain, you know. And the, the, all it would take was one person. Think of this. We to, cannot to, open. To make a phone call to the feds. When I was on the school and board. And then be up our behinds. About John, it. when I was on the school board, we could not open up the Tower Academy. Because of the ADA. Once we closed the school down. Yeah. When we closed it, now we're under, you know, it's a new game plan, right? Yeah. We cannot do it because the only way you can get anybody upstairs in that place, yeah. where it, it's a weird, it's only a short portion of the building. Yeah. It's not the whole floor. So it's not big enough to put an elevator, which 
you would have to put spiral stairs. You know, that was one of the problems. You would have to cut through like the, you know. With some of the developments of, you know, where uh, Junior's is, the upstairs there. Yeah. They, there's no elevators. Well, there used to be in that building. When that was a... Uh, I don't think so. I can remember I bought my first stove there when I got married. It was married. never an elevator. Wait a, minute, wait a minute. I got... When I bought my first set of stove, it was Maseroff... Uh, John will probably call up and agree with me. It was called Maseroff's... Uh, uh, At the old... We got one minute. The old juniors, where the juniors last laugh. Yeah, it was Maseroff furniture. There's no, there's no elevator in there. There was one when I was a kid. Not nah, one. I mean, there I was a freight elevator. I used to work there. Was a long time. There was a club there that I used oh, to work at. There was a freight elevator there. Many, many in the eighties. Because how do you think they got the stoves off the top floor? That was, that was a furniture store, John. With uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. It, it was there. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to picture it. Unless it was, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't, I can't. I'll bet you, I'll bet you a lunch oh boy, I'm at Morton's Steakhouse in Cleveland. Oh, thanks. Uh, why, why don't we? How about McDonald's? Well, that's how Color sure man. I am. <laughs> that's how oh, sure yeah. I am. Oh, I'm sure. Okay. Now he wants. Now he. Now remember, he finally knows he wants to go to I Morton's. Remember, I rode up in it with my wife because what they used to do, they took you up, and they had like appliances on one floor and. Well, I could see that, but I don't see where. They you know, a, I'm trying to fig, picture the whole. They might have taken it out. John. I remember the whole club. I what, mean, it was when did upstairs, you work there? Eighties. Mid eighties. Well, what was the name of the club? It was uh, Paps AM. It was a nightclub. Maybe, maybe they took it out then. I mean, but I'm trying. You know, I'm trying to figure out where they had a back stairwell. They had stair. You there know, was three stairwells I down the stairs. I can't remember. And where then it was. there, I, there was nowhere. There's no way. I can't remember where it was, but I'm, I remember. Are you sure it's not across the street where the post office? No, because I was a Maseroff man, and Maseroff was in. You look like a Maseroff. Across man. the street was I forget what they used to call it. it was painted gray. John, John has to call back and tell me. But he had two team clubs fighting, remember? Yeah. But the one on the other side was, uh, it was the a, night shift I think they were both furniture stores. And the Maseroff was the one where Junior's is. You better, I better look that up. Now you, now you I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't picture it. I mean, I was there all the time. We had like three furniture stores downtown and stayed alone. I believe it. But they all had the elevators. It was just, they were uh, what you call cargo elevators. You know, he slid the door across. And okay. Not like a, a, you know. Right. Interesting. I'm just, I can't picture where they had an elevator in there. Next time John calls, I'll get him on the air. Get John to Google Maseroffs while we're, actually, I could have Googled it, but we're out but of yeah, time. Yeah, you know, we get, if we can get a, we have to find a way that we can accommodate without, you know, otherwise you're going to have all these empty floors. That just. I'm concerned about a lot of that stuff. The whole mixed, you, you have you know what to happens have elevators. You if, have to. Yeah, but if, if you can't do it, John, then you've got a building like, uh, I'll point out, the, the old reflections on State Street. Mm -hmm. okay? you got pigeons flying through the top floor now I mean, because got you the, can't uh, develop it. The PACA building right now, Fort, those guys have done a really good, I think his name is Mark Tannenbaum. I'm friend with them, friends with them on Facebook. I don't really know him that way. I think I've met him before. But see, the only ones that had really elevators in the old days were if you had to get something up to down. Yeah. But, you know, regular people in the old days, you know, Sometimes you, you walk to come two or three steps. You know, they've done a lot of good things with that building. And if, you know, are you familiar with the Lightweight Project that Dave Brennan and, and a lot of the uh, groups yeah. are working on? Boy, if that takes he's, place. He's been talking about that with me for years. Yeah, that's going to be a nice. Dave, that's, David a nice is, that's why David project. had to quit council. He's got. Yeah, he's got more important things to do that he can work on. Well, not only that, his, uh, his employer, you know, keeps him busy. Bostwick, yeah. I think I mean, when he left, that was, that was bad. Some, I keep, you know, he's a friend of mine. I keep a lot of things him. that we're talking about today, the historical district, that's all Dave Brennan. Yeah, I mean, that's something that def, the definite, I'm surprised you guys haven't passed that yet. Well, it was upstairs. It's being worked on. We oh, talked boy. to, well, I will say this, Mr. <laughs> Attorney Betza has brought everything off the table now. So it's coming to us. Last call. Go ahead, caller. Was it Epps Furniture? No, the one across the street was painted gray, man. Wasn't it, uh, I'm trying to think of what they called it. But Maseroff's was the one on the uh, southwest corner where Junior's is, right? Right. And they had an elevator in there. I remember that. Where were, I'm trying to, I, I can't picture Yeah, John anything. can't remember it. He's right about in the middle of the, or the uh, what, what was that, 13th Street? It's right on the corner. Where the trucks parked back in there, they had an elevator. 
That's how they got the appliances down. Yeah. And the big couches and all that. Maybe they had it bricked off. I don't know. It could have been. Yeah, it could have been. But I think Epps was over there, down in that area, too. Epps, Stanley's. I, I'm trying to think who was across the street, though, in the silver, in the, in the gray building there, you know, where, where the post office is now. I think that was Epps. Oh, you, Epps, you're right. E-P-P-S. Yeah. Yep, you're right. Okay, you guys are getting off the air now. Thanks. See, I, I thought I could remember, you're, I knew you'd come through. Thanks. I'm, I'm glad I didn't bet you, John. I mean, I You've been out at a nice steak dinner. Absolutely. Morton's, too. I, I mean, you might have brought John some I, leftovers. I, I could have taken you to Pittsburgh, McCormick, <laughs> and Schmick. Or to the Buffalo Chop House. Ruth Thompson and I were talking about That's good there, too. Where's that at? Buffalo. Buffalo Chop House. It's, they don't even put... You know it's bad. If I they don't really put the a, price on the menu. If I was really a bad guy, uh, I'd take you to Cleveland, uh -huh. and we go to Red's. Oh, I don't think I've ever been to that one. Look it up. Red's? Yeah. What about the new steakhouse up here? Uh, you up mean there? Cannon Chop House? Yeah, have you been there yet? No, I haven't been there I heard yet. that's expensive, too. Well, you know what? It's probably a little high-end, but guess yeah. what? Hey. It's not for everybody. No, it's not. I mean, you know. Go ahead, caller. Last, last, call, caller. last caller. Talking about steakhouses and Morton's? Morton's. Kraz wants me to take them. Yeah, I told him. I said, <laughs> I take them. There's a new one in Cleveland called Red's. Yeah. It, it, it makes Morton's look like... Uh, really? Yeah. Well, Mortis has a steakhouse in Catanning, too. Yeah, I, I imagine they would. And they, in Pittsburgh, they got McCormick and Schmick. And they got a great big cow over their front door. Where? <laughs> Catanning. Wow. Yeah, I used to stop there all the time and get steaks. Ooh. That's when I was going to Johnstown working. Yeah, we, you know, uh, we don't have any, you know, luckily in Erie, you can still get a good dinner at Ricardo's or a lot of places. Oh, yeah. yeah, you can get one from uh, Grossman's old place, too, if you want to pay the bucks. Yeah, well, you know what? It's not for everybody, I tell them. I'll tell you what. Uh, I used to even get good meals at Pickle Bill's. Ooh, I remember that place. It's still there, I believe. Yeah, that's down by the, where the old stadium was, wasn't it? In Ashtabula. Oh, that? Okay, I was off. Pickle Bill's. What was the one down by the Cleveland Stadium? Cleveland Stadium? Barnacle Bill's, or? No, no, I, no that was Erie Barnacle Bill. I don't remember. Yeah, I have to look them up, though. So, you know, you go on there and you think about all the old steaks. I remember when uh, there was one across the street from 26th Street. You'd get, get a rib steak for a buck and a half. <laughs> it's still your whole plate, and you'd get about 12 pounds of french fries. Good old days. God, John salivating over Getting here. hungry. Kaz. With a salad. Kaz is taking me to lunch. He don't know yet. So, well, you guys have a great day. All right, thanks for Good calling. And with that, Kaz, uh, you know, before we sign off, you know, just keep, you know, the uh, officer uh, who passed away, keep his family in your prayers and thoughts. And, yeah, there'll uh, be, I think it's an announcement about yeah. various things so, concerning yeah. that coming up. With that being said, you know, we want, you know, personally, I want to thank all the public workers that work for the city. I know a lot of them take a lot of crap, but a lot of people do appreciate what you do. And, you know, we just wish the best for you. So whenever you're ready with the music, Mike. This has been Taxpayers Hotline with your host, Kaz Kwiatkowski and John Steiner. Thanks for watching.